Oh, hi there, I'm Colin Lamb. I hope you're doing very well wherever it is that you may happen to be. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you very much for asking. Cheers to you and cheers to me. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Slash's new single um, from his forthcoming, upcoming, it's fucking coming, blues album. Um, it's a cover of Howlin' Wolf's Killing Floor, and it features none other than Brian Johnson and Stephen Brand Perry, uh, Stephen Tyler Perry, per, I get my fucking Perry's mixed up. The guy with the big mouth from Aerosmith. Um, I've, I've enjoyed Aerosmith songs over the, the years, but I have to admit, something about that guy just irks me. Don't know what it is. I'm sure some people out there don't like me either, but, uh, I do like that dude looks like a lady song. Was it in Mrs. Doubtfire? I could be wrong, could be mistaken, don't know. They have some great tracks, but he's just blowing the harp in this one so I don't have to worry about getting bothered by him. I could stay awake just to hear you breathing. We're going to be checking out this new song from Slash. It's from his new blues album of blues covers featuring amazing artists and Stephen Tut, Stephen Tut, the fucking guy from Aerosmith. And I'm excited to check this out. We got Brian Johnson from ACDC. Here I am down in Australia. ACDC announced a world tour. Where are they playing so far? Not fucking Australia, that's for sure. I moved down here. I missed King Gizzard, King Glizzard, and the Blizzard Gizzard Blizzard three times in 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 Canada. And uh, I moved down here to Australia. Where do they go on tour? Not fucking Australia. Anyways, let's check this out. This is Slash's cover of Howlin' Wolf's "The Killing Floor" on the tone ninety-eight point. I want my fucking beer money back, mate. Where the fuck these bands at, mate? So you'll probably recognize this little riff from the Lemon song, Led Zeppelin. Howlin' Wolf is going to write his credit in there, and I think they used to use a couple of his tracks to kind of put into their big jam. I like the, I like this rhythm track. I should have quit you, baby, a long time ago. I should have quit you, pretty woman. I went on down to Mexico. If I had followed my first line, if I had followed, show us the fade. We want to see the faders. I don't want to see the fucking faders with Brian Johnson. <laughs> Shit. Voice sounds good though. Oh, there he is. He looks like he's just stepped out of a van going to Coachella. He's out of gas and he's blowing the heart for some fucking beetroot juice. Some fucking cold press diesel to put in that old fever van he's driving through the desert. I walked all over his car. When my friend come from Mexico with me, I should have went on. When my friends come from Mexico with me. Oh, Slash has the big, uh, but I'm not the big hollow body there. I pay him some tribute. I think it was that moment that he got there. That's nice, man. I owe, I owe Steven Tyler an apology, by the way. There's the man himself. This is Esty, I gotta say.
I like that solo, man. That was perfect amount of dirt on there, but the notes weren't obscured. That was a really, really articulate, really, really, really nicely played solo. like this that they'll be overplayed, but this is just a fucking ripping trap. So one thing's painfully clear, I owe Steven Tyler um, several apologies. Um, but I will give him none. Instead, I will give him some fucking praise, man. That was a ripping good solo. And the way that he broke from the harp and just screamed into the mic, um, they had a, a very fancy looking mic there for the harmonica. And it looked like there's probably a, quite a bit of breakup happening with the harp to give it that, that great sound. And he used it on his voice as well. Fantastic. Much apologies, all kidding aside. That was a fucking great solo. Um, Slash's guitar playing was fantastic in there. Um, his solo, like I was, like I was saying during the the, the song there, um, perfect tone on there. He had the big hollow body going there. I, I wasn't sure if that was a Gibson or if he had an Epiphone as well. The, ry the rhythm tracks there. He had the guy playing that gold top with the. Um, I think it just had the P90s, the, the the big pickups on there. Really great sound. I mean, obviously, it would be more or less. It would be hard to make that group of musicians sound bad from the looks of things, but that was fucking fantastic. I enjoyed that. Will I listen to the rest of that album? Absolutely. Um, would I listen to that again? Absolutely. You know what? The blues. When I was learning how to play guitar, the blues pentatonic and all that stuff it was almost like a bad name it was this dusty old thing that your dad did you know that people get the old well you can't fool me I'm slash won't be giving me a call anytime soon to play but people used to slander the blues and they still do they talk about it like it's a dirty word it's boring it's been explored all the all the way and whenever i i see somebody kind of tackling these old tracks there's there's two bad things that can happen one being is that they kind of go too stock on it and keep it too dan dan like that just kind of what i was playing there and the second thing is that they overplay and i think that this track was an example of neither of those two things it was just fucking good players ripping a track um brian johnson's vocal was pretty simple but i don't think the vocal was meant to really blast out of the speaker in that one um especially when you've got slash playing guitar and it slashes out it's probably going to be the guitar but he did a great job of singing that track and i really enjoyed it anyways my name is colin Lamb. if you've enjoyed this video and you want to check out other reactions on my channel or if you had something you'd like me to check out, please do let me know down in the comments and subscribe if you feel like it. In the meantime, cheers.